Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Louie. I'm Mike, Mike's weather page. It's uh, Thursday. This is our morning update on the tropics, especially Invest 98. So we're going to talk about everything real quick and then definitely dig into uh, Invest 98, what the overnight models show, see if there's any trends, who should be watching, everybody. Uh, but thanks for coming to my uh, YouTube channel. It's growing. We're over 20,000 now. We hit it. We did it, Louie. We did it. Yay! <laughs> we hit twenty thousand. We'll be hitting a hundred thousand next. So appreciate that. All right. So here's here's obviously the web page. Uh, and again, uh, I always put this out there. I'm not an official source of weather. I'm a weather blogger. Um, always refer to the National Hurricane Center, National Weather Service for official information. And I have a lot of that linked on my site. Obviously. Here's a look at the tropics this morning. This is uh, quite colorful. We got all the crayons out. We got yellow, orange, and red. These little guys we're not going to talk about. Nothing in, in, in the imminent. Um, obviously, this is Invest 98 down here. We're really going to talk about Fiona. We're going to show here and Gaston real quick. But that's the map. It's uh, you know September 22nd. Definitely active. Here's what it looks like current satellite. This is um, kind of cool. Well, there's our 98 trying to get going. Gaston way up here. I don't really think you can see it in the picture. And then Fiona here, really a monster of a storm. That sucker, almost the whole size of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, pretty big one. All right, real quick, Gaston. Believe it or not, we got tropical storm warnings for the Azores. We have people that are watching the Azores. Hello, Azores people. Uh, there you go. Tropical storm warnings are up for the whole island. This thing's going to push a lot of convection your way. So I do have that linked on the site. You can take a look at it. Um, tropical storm. Bermuda now. We gotta, we've, been, we've been covering Bermuda all week. Still skirting just to your west tomorrow night into Friday, but we still are showing potential 100 mile an hour wind gusts with the GFS and the Euro. Most of them are coming in uh, almost earlier Friday morning, like daybreak, but we can start to get them overnight Thursday. But man, look at that. Hurricane warnings are now up. They were a little hesitant, I think, on doing that, but hurricane warnings are up. And then secondly, the big, big story that's kind of not being talked about, Nova Scotia might get one of their biggest storms ever. Uh, Saturday, this thing is going to be deepening down to 920 range millibar system. That's huge. And NHC went down to hurricane status, but man, anything 920 millibar is going to produce a ton of wind. Uh, the current windy app showing 100 plus, 110 plus mile an hour winds rolling into Nova Scotia. That's going to be a big story. All right, so here we go. This is Invest 98. Still 90% chance. Not very organized. Hurricane hunters are are down there. They're uh, fixing to go into uh, the storm, I think, this morning. So how about that? They're providing great data. Latest spaghetti models are this. Some are thinking, and rightfully so, some of the modeling looks like it shifted west a little bit, right? It did. A lot of the models are based on GFS, some of them. Uh, the GFS shifted way west. Uh, but, you know, it's important to note the GFS has been up and down this year. And uh, the Euro... Still predicting a Florida West Coast landfall along with the Canadian model, which isn't even shown on here. The Canadian model a little farther south down, almost by the Keys. So we have a, we have a pretty big spread here, but we really don't. A, a small little turn here and there. Uh, everybody in the Gulf Coast obviously should be watching. Um, upper Gulf, Eastern Gulf still seems like it's more the target, in my opinion. This thing's going to take some time to develop uh, into the Western Caribbean, but man, some of the modeling are, are showing strong again overnight. Um, here are some latest ensembles. These are uh, what we look at a lot. <clears throat> These are on weathernerds.org. But the Euro definitely tightening, tightening up their thinking. You want to see these things become a little tighter, meaning confidence increases, but the GFS is really confident on this pull northward. Uh, the GFS... Are, Euro, sorry, Euro. <laughs> Cheers. We got to get a little Louie in the morning. Uh, coffee time. But the Euro, as you can see, it's written right above it for people like me. <laughs> Euro is becoming a little more confident on this pull northward. Um, there's a frontal line coming down Tuesday. Jet stream dip in a little bit. Uh, it has weakened a little bit on the latest overnight run as far as the jet stream. But, man... Confidence-wise, the Euro is pretty much all of Florida. <laughs> so, 
a little bit going upper golf, but you can see what the euro is thinking. Now we're going to have another euro PN run around 12Z, which is around 2 o'clock. We'll see if there's any wiggles and wobbles. And, you know, the mean is still kind of over west central Florida. That's been three runs in a row now. Now the GFS here, you can see that little bit of shift here. A lot of shifting in the models. The overall mean is still pointing to the Big Bend Panhandle area. So take it for what it's worth. Uh, here we go. This is another cool, this is a Tomer Berg site. I link it. I showed a lot. This is a spread of ensembles. Basically just kind of showing you the area where the generalization of the uh, the ensembles are grouped together. And this does include, I believe, the Euro GFS in the UK on this one. Um, but you can kind of see Eastern Gulf. And, 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 listen, uh, well, we're getting this in the next time. All right, so here's the latest on uh, tropicaltidbits.com. This is your Euro uh, showing a 953 system that's very strong and it actually curves up into Florida. This would be on Wednesday morning. Now look at the, the Canadian model. Canadian on Tuesday predicting possible landfall South Florida. Canadian was showing the Yucatan three days ago. Remember we talked about the bias on the Canadian model that it, on Fiona it was the one of the outliers showing you know coastal United States. Um, it finally caught up with Fiona, and it, now it's catching up. So kind of the same thing. I mean, I, I love the look of history and what we're seeing every season with models, and the Canadians kind of shifted. So we're going to see if that's a trend or, or what. But the big kicker and everything is the, the GFS has really slowed our system down, missing that front and a slow pull up into the Gulf. Um, yeah, we'll see. That's a definitely an outlier. But some, it's something to show. And, and look, this is a week from Saturday. This, I mean, that would – history tells you differently um and in the uk a lot of people like me to show the uk the uk model is showing this uh basic euro style trek with a western caribbean development turning uh because of that approaching frontal line so so yeah i mean uh a couple notes here i want to mention uh you know the euro showing a pretty strong hurricane if it cuts through the state remember uh, it's not going to slow down in intensity much at all. It, it'll slow down three, two, one. But uh, what we've learned over the years is that people don't uh, realize that as a storm passing through the Florida Peninsula, if it does, if it does this, uh, we'll have hurricane effects through the state, even the East Coast. Something to take note. And what we learned with Michael, we had Category Three winds all up to Alabama and Georgia. Okay. So don't focus on the landfall. Strong system doesn't weaken right away. So you're, you will have inland effects. Don't think this is ever just a coastal event. The second thing is a large widening system like Irma. Uh, there, there's likelihood that we're going to see effects down all across the East Coast, regardless of uh, this West Coast track. So East Coast had a lot of flooding, a lot of surge with Irma. That's something to think about. Don't think... You're going to be out of it. And secondly, when this thing pops on the other side, there's some models showing, you know, maybe some intensification or, or maintain some intensity, meaning coastal Carolinas, Georgia could even see some effects if this goes through the peninsula. So there's a lot of ifs, but those are things that, you know, think about. Um, here's the latest Canadian model on the, this is Tropical Tidbits. Um, they're loading a little slow, obviously. Everybody in the world's on it. Here's what the GFS is showing, a very slow developing system. Uh, into the Yucatan, just need to put that out there. This would be around Tuesday. Uh, GFS is showing that, it has been showing that. So just kind of be aware down there, first part of next week. And, you know, GFS is really gone west. This is now Louisiana, but I would be irresponsible not to show that um, as an outlier possibility. You, you know, you want to see consistency with models, and right now the GFS is really messing with everybody right now. Um, the latest Euro, like I said, been extremely consistent on this uh, rapidly intensifying. Here's south of Jamaica on Sunday, near the Caymans on Sunday into Monday as a possible hurricane. This is really consistent developing in those warm Western Caribbean waters and possibly developing into something pretty strong uh, nearing you know the Florida Peninsula. Uh, this would be Wednesday right here. So, you know, any system down in Cuba, you know, we're going to start seeing winds as late as Monday night into the key keys. Monday night, Tuesday. Remember, don't focus where the, the center is. You're going to see effects way earlier. There is a little sign that this thing could weaken, too, on approach. We talked about that. You know, there is a front line that's going to be hanging around. Maybe some of that dry air gets wrapped up into our system on approach. So hopefully a little weakening before landfall. But every time I've seen it, it's supposed to weaken. They, they 
sometimes don't. So just, you know, just whatever. <laughs> Let's hope it weakens before a landfall. Uh, but we've been seeing a trend with these things riding over those loop currents and loop eddies uh, not being affected like the model said. Uh, we see a lot of intensification on approach. A lot of that's due to that extra warm water and the loop eddies. So, And then the Canadian, like I said, it did a big switch on us. Uh, look at that. Uh, this would be Monday into Tuesday. Really throwing a wrench into forecasting. But overall, it's making sense, right? we got a developing system in the Caribbean. Likelihood of getting pulled up. That's what we know. Um, I'm still, you know, leaning on the Euro side because the history repeats itself with these approaching fronts. So we'll see. Lots to watch, but hope this made sense. Appreciate you joining the, the YouTube channel. I'm going to do these a lot. You know, we go live in the mornings at 919 Eastern right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And, uh, yeah, even in the winter we talk weather and spring. So hopefully you guys like our channel and uh, we'll keep it going. All right, we'll see you. Have a great Thursday. Bye-bye.